has to be okay, good. okay so let me uh thanks so much let me introduce uh dorian le putrec uh so uh dorian is a professor at the institute denis poisson and uh at the University d'Orléans. Previously, he was at University Paris Sud and University of Rennes. And uh, he works in applied methods, method, mathematics, analysis, and geometry. And he has some really interesting work on exit times, which we got curious about, which, uh, and uh, we're going to hear about it. And uh, maybe it relates to some of the machine learning problems we are thinking about, and we already heard about exit times. So, yeah, the floor is yours. Thank you for the presentation. How do I go back? You have the, uh, sorry, sir. You put the. And uh, let's also thank uh, the organizers. Yeah. Oh, this one's not. It's not plugged in actually, that one. Sorry. Yeah, you're going to have to use those uh, here. Sorry, but you could still use the laser. Sorry about that. No, no, no problem. Okay, so uh, let me first thank the organizers for inviting me to this uh, nice workshop with people of uh, different communities. And so uh, I want to speak about uh, the work with Laurent uh, Michel, who is a professor at the University of Bordeaux, and I'm going to say to who is here and who's going to talk this afternoon. And I want to, to speak about uh, a work where we try to, uh, to, to give some, uh, some links between uh, the spectral theory and the probabilistic theory of uh, elliptic diffusions. So I will quickly, uh, I will first motivate uh, the problem and then I will. I will give you some uh, general results and at the end some precise results uh, on uh, on this topic. So first, to uh, to have an idea of what we are going to look at uh, after, let me introduce uh, a classical ODE. So just the ODE uh, DXT in. Dxt is a B of XTDT, where B is a smooth vector field, which is which has a gradient term minus a, a vector field term, such as the, the vector field is everywhere orthogonal to the gradient field. And we assume moreover for uh, for simplicity that V is a con confining double well potential that is that uh, V has this form and I assume that V admits two two uh, precisely three critical points two non degenerate minima in uh, M naught and M one so M naught is a global minimum and M one is a is a local one and uh, non degenerate saddle point at S which means that the Hessian of V admits one negative eigenvalue at S and V minus one positive eigenvalue. So this is a, a kind of OD we already encountered, but here we have this, uh, this L term, which makes the, the dynamics uh, non-gradient. Uh, non but nevertheless, since L is everywhere orthogonal to uh, to uh, Gradient B, it somehow behaves as a, a gradient vector field, as a gradient vector, as a gradient dynamics. So more precisely, we have this, uh, this properties. So first, if I take a solution to the ODE, XT, it is defined as R plus since if I derivate V of XT, I have minus the norm of gradient V of XT square, which is Non negative, which is non positive, which means that the energy is decreasing along the trajectories, and then that the trajectories are, uh, are, are trapped in the double well potential. And uh, using this, uh, these properties and uh, the fact that again L is orthogonal to gradient V, which is used to get this. It's uh, quite easy to show that the equilibrium points for the dynamics are precisely the critical points of V. 
that is the point where V is zero are just M not M1 and S. Moreover, again, as for gradient dynamics, every trajectory converges to one of the three equilibrium points, and only the equilibria M0 and M1 are stable, and moreover, they are asymptotically stable. So now I take the previous OD and I, I uh, transform it into a stochastic OD by adding uh, Gaussian noise. So the, the kind of equation we already saw uh, uh, many times in, uh, in this uh, workshop. So I have the Gaussian noise times uh, an amplitude, the square root of 2h, where h can be understood as the, the temperature. So h is proportional to the temperature. And so this is a, a prototypical model uh, used in statistical physics. And we, we already talk about this. Except the only difference here is it is not necessary gradient. So of course, when uh, uh, so when n is zero, that is when the process is gradient, and also when just the divergence of l is zero, then the Gibbs measure, which is exponential minus v over h times the normalization constant to have the probability measure is an invariant measure for every h positive, which means that if x naught is initially distributed according to this distribution, then it remains distributed according to this measure for every time positive. And what we are interested in in the behavior of this equation when h is small, that is in the low, low temperature regime. So when h is small, the process X remains trapped during a long period of time near a local, admin, near a local minimum of V because it, sent, it is sent near this local minimum of V by the flow of B, which sends the trajectories around M0 or M1. But then, after a quite long time, it, can, it will hop quickly near the other local minimum because of the Bosnian diffusion with low amplitude. And so for this reason, for this reason, we said that the regions around M1 and M2, M0 and M1 are metastable. They are almost stable, but you take a really long time to escape from these regions. It makes hard the, uh, to, to make an efficient simulation of the process by integrating the SDE. And then for, uh, for numerical purposes, we want to build efficient numerical methods. And this efficient numerical method requires a precise knowledge of the exit time from this metastable region. This exit time, which is long because of the, of the, uh, of the low amplitude Gaussian noise. So just here a picture. Uh, uh, Tony Lelier, uh, who, who is going to speak to more, uh, gave me about the illustration of the metastability. So, on the first picture, you see the, the process we are looking at, but here L is, is zero. So, it's a gradient, it's a, it's a gradient dynamics. And uh, there is a boundary. So, in the case of the same, there is a boundary here. You see the level set of V. You have two minima. Here and here, which has two, which are two global minima, two saddle points here and here, and uh, a local maximum. And we are looking to, uh, to specular conditions, specular reflection conditions at the boundary. And so, on this, on this uh, picture, you see the evolution of the x coordinates when the time evolves. So we see the X coordinates of this minimum is minus one. So we see oscillations around minus, time, minus one around a long time. Then a quick, a quick passage around the other local minimum and the, the process goes on. And on the second picture, it's almost the same, except here, there is no vector field at all. P is zero. It's just the Brownian motion. It's just a Brownian motion, but what is playing the role 
of the small amplitude regime is the, the thinness of this, this part between the two, uh, the, these two parts of the domain omega. And we see the same kind of, uh, of uh, behavior. Okay, so now, before uh, introducing uh, our problematic, let me introduce uh, the infinitesimal generator of the dynamics, which is uh, uh, a differential operator which permits to study from a mathematical viewpoint the, uh, the process. So the generator is done by this operator minus H Lagrangian minus V dot gradient that is by this operator. And what means the LH is the infinitesimal generator of the dynamics? It means that if I take a reasonable function f from Rd to R, what we call an observable, then the function which sends x to the expectation of f of x t and x naught is equal to x satisfies this heat equation. So dt u plus lh u is zero and u at the time zero is so if I if I take if I take b which is zero, this is the, the standard heat equation. And now what uh, I'm interested in this talk is to look at the evolution of the process when uh, we look at the process on the bounded domain of RD of RD with uh, with absorbing Dirichlet condition. So when we look at this problem, we have to consider the homogeneous Dirichlet realization of LH and omega. I will come back in a, in a few uh, seconds on, on what it means. And this Dirichlet realization has a compact gradient band and a principal eigenvalue lambda one h, which is positive. And so, at least when l is zero, which corresponds to the gradient case, which is really let's say easier to handle, we know that lambda one h gives the exponential weight of convergence to zero for the expectation of f of x o when x naught is x. Why it is a convergence to zero? Because we are looking at absorbing condition on the boundary. So the process escape the escape from the, the, the domain omega. And so at the end, there will be no particles in the in the domain. And so since lambda H gives this rate of convergence to zero, the natural question is what are the precise link between lambda H and the first exit time to omega from omega, where the first exit time is defined as the infimum of the non-negative t such that x t does not belong to omega starting from a point in omega. And the, the other question we, we are interested in is can, can we give some asymptotics when h goes to zero and more, and more precisely, can, uh, can we give some sharp asymptotics when h goes to zero? The uh, uh, question said so this heat equation, so it's a partial differential equation that you need to solve. And even in the case of equal zero, this is not necessarily an easy thing to do, right? Uh, yeah, okay. Let's say we, it depends what you mean to solve. Let's say there, there is a, yeah. I guess if we want the exit time. Yeah, when L is zero, yeah. it's, it's not easy to solve, but it's easy to say that there is a unique solution to this uh, to this equation, yeah. and after we have to to work to. But if I want to, if I want the exit time, I guess I would need. As it? Yeah, exactly. If I mean yeah, no, the exit time, we have not uh, an abuse. Uh, if if you if we want the exit time, the exit time, the, the expectation of the exit time is solution of. Uh, so, uh, the behavior time plus I think yeah. one to the this one is a bit thicker. So, uh, the, we have LH of equal to one. 
So we we have a, we have a, a PD a PD uh, formulation uh, and we need to know uh, this experiment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so but I guess what I was asking is then in I guess in the general case you cannot always solve this, no? Or like it seems that it's only in specific cases that you will be able to solve the PD. We, the, the, let's say we. With more more assumption that what what uh, I give now, but uh, a little more assumption, we can say that there is, uh, the problem is well posed, and after it's not because the problem is well posed. It's that the problem is well posed that if there is there is a unique solution which well behaves with respect to the initial conditions, but uh, not enough to be able to to derivate some uh, some uh, information on two omega or lambda one h. So we have to work more after. Let's say the, okay. the first functional analysis part to say the problem is well posed, okay. and after we need to work. But in, in many cases, in coding, you know, it's an autonomous system. Like if the time dependence goes away, we just have to coding. Sorry, uh, only you now because this is a, this is a operator, uh, another operator. If you remove the time, you have still a, a Laplacian. Okay. Is no more on OD. Okay, so of course this question is interesting for us only when omega contains at least one local minimum and not of v, because if omega does not contain any local, any local minimum of v, the region is not metastable because the, the trajectory will, will escape quickly the domain, and so there, the, there won't be the, the metastability phenomenon. So some uh, some quite uh, old results about uh, about this are given when omega is a confining well, a confining single well of V. That is, there is one local one only one critical point in omega, which is the minimum, let's say, M naught. And confining means means for for us that B scalar the normal is negative on partial omega. So in this case, we know from the works of Penning and Mansell in the 70s that for every x in omega, the limit of h times the log of the expectation of two omega is given by the minimum of v of partial omega minus v of, of n naught. And this is the limit of h times the log of one over lambda one h. So in some sense, at the logarithmic scale, Lambda one h times the expectation behaves as, as one at, at the logarithmic scale. And this has been made really precise by Z, which proved a few years after that for every x in omega, the limit is really converging to one. And then we also mentioned some uh, there are Quite a lot of work in the in the multiple well, but for gradient dynamics. That is when L is is zero, where the, the analysis is uh, a bit uh, more uh, easier. I will explain why in a, in the second one. Sorry, could you remind what is lambda one h? What is lambda one h? So I, so it's the first second value. I, I will I will explain uh, better. Uh, uh, a bit later what it is, but it's, it's a, let's say the first eigenvalue of LH, so the eigenvalue with the smallest wheel part, but I, I will give a slide in a, in a few seconds with, with this. Okay, um, in this work about the, the multiple well case for gradient dynamics, there are uh, a lot of works where uh, I put in a few of them, where I uh, given sharp spectral asymptotics, Mainly when there are no critical points on omega, but also uh, sharp asymptotics when there are some critical points on partial omega. And uh, in, a, in a recent work, Boris uh, Nek 2 proved the, the link between exit time and spectrum where, when there are some critical points on partial omega. And another question anyway, so what you think about what it means to be a confining single well? So, confining single well, but, uh, it's Take a picture in something like this. So we have all the trajectories are converging to one point and not, and uh, there are no, uh, no 
de de setup de vecteur field euh, à l'intérieur de domaine. Donc, les fils que tu as en disant d'un lit, les deux vecteurs à l'intérieur de domaine, c'est là que tu as une polo de classique au niveau du lit. Ok. Donc, il y a des gens de la salle. 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 Il y a L is zero is not zero. That is when we are not looking at gradient dynamics and when there are some critical points on partial omega. So I will now try to explain a bit uh, to state the, the, the general results we have. And before I need uh, an adapted functional uh, framework for making the analysis. So for making the analysis, it's quite natural to work in this weighted inverse space, which is a L2 inverse space, but with the weight, which is exponential minus V over H. So why it is quite natural? Because in this inverse space, the adjoint of L has a structure which is quite similar to the structure of LH. We have again minus H Lagrangian. We have again plus gradient V dot gradient. And the plus L the gradient is replaced by minus L the gradient. But we have a reminder term which is minus divergence of L. So, in particular, when the divergence of L is zero, it has really the same form as LH. You just replace plus L by minus L. And I, I recall that in this case, exponential minus V over H is the invariant measure. And moreover, when L is zero, the operator LH acting on the subolate space H2 of omega intersected with the subolate space H10, H1 with zero directly boundary condition with value in L2 in the weighted L2 is a self adjoint operator in the space L2 weighted. It's for this reason that it's easier when. L is zero, we have a self adjoint operator, and so it's really easier to make the analysis using the, some non results on the self adjoint operators. And so, in this context, here is, cell, let's say, the, the first result of functional analysis which permit us to, to work and to, to make uh, other, uh, to make a, a, a deeper analysis. So it's the following. So we assume that omega is the smooth bounded domain of RD. Then for every positive H, the operator, I will explain what I'm going to say on a, on, on a simple picture. The operator LH, I think on H2 intersecting with H1 zero with value H2 weighted is a sectorial operator with a compact gradient, which means that is spectrum in this field and made of eigenvalues with finite multiplicity, and that spectrum lives in a code. And moreover, LH admits a simple and positive real eigenvalue lambda 1H, such that if I take an element of the spectrum which is not lambda 1H, the real part of this element is strictly bigger than lambda 1H. We make a picture. So here you see there is a lambda one edge which is strictly positive, and the spectrum live in the code of its type. And there is no thing in some, uh, there is a, a gap because it is in a cone and it is this way. And of course, we have the same properties for, for the adjoint of, L, uh, L cell of LH and the spectrum of uh, the adjoint is just the conjugate, uh, the complex conjugate of the spectrum of LH. And lastly, 
LH, M, LH star, admit an eigenfunction associated with lambda 1H, which is positive. So the first, what we call the principal eigenvalue, the eigenvalue with the smallest wheel path is positive, and every eigenvector has a sign. And so up to choosing the sign, we can choose it positive in omega. Okay, so now let me uh, state the general result, but before I need uh, to make some assumption. So the assumption that I will, uh, I will make today is that our set omega behaves as a single well of the potential. So we assume that omega is a smooth bounded open domain of RZ, and we define T in as the X in omega such that F of X is strictly less than the mean of B on partial omega. And the first assumption we, we make is we assume that M naught is the only critical point of B in omega and that the boundary of T in intersects the boundary of partial omega. Like in this picture, so I will make another picture. So remember what, what I took for the shape of B. Here is B. Let me draw the level set. So here is B equal V of S. Here I have S, I have M dot. And I take, for example, I take a domain such as the boundary of C mean intersects the domain of partial omega. For example, this domain. And this is SY if I take the notation of this picture. And C, C mean is exactly this. I make it true. What is F of S? It is the of C mean. Oh, sorry, it's not, it's not F. Sorry, it's a it's a type of three of this. And under this assumption, under some uh, some uh, elementary topological arguments, we can show that M not belong to C mean, that C mean is selected, and that V of M not is the minimum of V and partial on the uh, on the on the closure of omega. So it really corresponds to each. So with this assumption, I can state the, the first result. So to do so, I introduce E, a compact subset of omega, which is same by the flow, by the classical flow on N naught. What does it mean? It means that for every X in K, the solution to the classical ODE with initial condition small X leads in omega on R plus, and this solution converges to M naught when T goes to plus infinity. So I take all the points which are sent by the flow on M naught and which stays forever in omega. They cannot escape from omega and come back to converge to M naught. Then in this case, the principal eigenvalue lambda by H satisfies the following. There exists some C positive, so that for every small H, lambda by H, is the only eigenvalue of LH with weak part smaller than C. What is important here is that C does not depend on H small. So here I have a C which does not depend on H. And moreover, the limit of H times the log of lambda 1H is given by minus mean of V of partial omega minus V of M naught. It means that lambda 1H behaves as exponential minus V of S minus V of M naught over H. And V of S minus V of M naught is exactly this potential value. So there is a gap, a constant gap, and the smallest eigenvalue is exponentially small. 
This is a disorder, and so it's going to zero extremely fast when H is going to zero. And moreover, we have uniformly with respect to X in key that lambda when H times the expectation of two omega starting from X is one plus an exponentially small error term, exponential minus C over H. And just notice that on my example, on sorry, with my assumptions, there, there is M naught is the only critical point in omega, but we can have critical points on partial omega, like here, S, the critical point on the boundary. So there is, it's not confining, there is a critical point on the boundary. And just uh, to give, uh, I don't know how much time do I have left? Uh, to... I think just uh, two minutes. Two minutes? <laughs> oh. Okay, so I won't I won't give you the, the idea of the proof. I, I will just uh, quickly. Uh, okay, okay, well, so I will try to to give you to state a precise result also. So to do so, I need to to, to go back to the classical dynamics. So here is the picture. Here is the classical dynamics, and we call that every trajectory converts to m not m one or s, and only m not and m one are stable, and they are asymptotically stable. And moreover, using some quite elementary linear algebra result, we can show that the equilibrium of s is a saddle point for this dynamics. So more precisely, we have the following result. We define L of S as the Jacobian of small s, small L of S. Then Hessian V of S plus capital L of S admits a single eigenvalue counting the multiplicities, which has a non-positive will part, a non-positive will part. And moreover, this eigenvalue is real and negative. So what does it mean? It means that if I take the linearization of the vector field at S, I think minus the linearization, it admits one negative eigenvalue and D minus one eigenvalues with positive real parts. So it's really a saddle point for the dynamics. And to state the result, I need, I need two more assumptions. So the first one is the divergent free assumption. So I assume that the vector field L satisfies the divergence of L is zero, which means that when we look at the process of the wall space, the lift measure is invariant. And we need a last assumption, which is the orthogonality assumption to the boundary. Let me assume here for simplicity that S is the only critical, the only, uh, so let me assume that the boundary of T mean intersects the boundary of omega only at the saddle point S in this picture, but the saddle point S is an interesting saddle point on the boundary because it's the point which comes to from L to M1. And I assume also that denoting by mu the negative eigenvalue of H and V of S plus L of S, that the line S plus its kernel is orthogonal to partial omega. So I have not so much time, so I just say what, what it means from a dynamical viewpoint. It means that partial omega is tangent to the stable manifold of S for the classical dynamics. And the stable manifold is the set of all the trajectories which are converging to S. So this is tangent to my red line, and it's a relevant assumption since, in practice, the metastable regions are chosen as the basin of attraction of some stable equilibria, and so they contain uh, characteristic curves uh, on, uh, on the, in the boundary. And so, with this assumption, we can uh, we can uh, uh, say the, this result: uh, the lambda one H satisfies the Lyapunov kind of formula. It is equivalent to a constant prefactor times the exponential minus the energetic barrier over H, where we can give what is the prefactor denoting by mu 
the negative eigenvalue of HNV of S with L of S, the prefactor has this form. So it's the NL Kramer's formula, the same kind uh, uh, Antonio uh, uh, wrote uh, yesterday. But here, the negative eigenvalue of HNV is replaced by the negative eigenvalue of the this matrix, which is not symmetric. And so just a, a slide of uh, conclusion. Uh, I just make one conclusion <coughs> is that adding the non gradient term L accelerates the exit from omega. Because if I take the ratio of lambda 1 H when L is zero and when L is not zero, I have something which is less or equal to one. And so it's asymptotically the ratio of the exit time in the in the in the, in the non gradient case divided by the exit time in the gradient case. So the exit time in the non gradient case is better, and moreover, it equals to one if and only if L does not change the unstable manifold of H and V of S. So if there is a real non gradient term added around S, we have a better acceleration. Okay, I stop here. Sorry yeah. for. Uh... Oh, no worries. Thank you, Dorian, for this really interesting talk. I think there are a number of questions, Mood. Yeah, I have a question about the acceleration. So the exit time is mostly dominated by the weak line. Yes. So if H is small, like, do you think that this is going to bring like a significant? Okay, so. It looks like there is an exponential. There is an exponential factor and a constant in front of this factor. Yeah. But uh, for example, for for some uh, physicists, we are we are working on uh, on uh, accelerated dynamics. They want to accelerate the dynamics from uh, from metastable states. What they use is that they they, they approximate the the dynamics by uh, by uh, a dynamics which is uh, which is discrete in space. And they use precise formula to uh, they, they use precise formula to to compute the probability of escaping ne near uh, around uh, around uh, every saddle point because when when they they do this for a long time for uh, you take many basin of attraction and you escape you escape you escape at the end this constant will uh, will really play uh, play a role but of course it's uh, it's the same exponentially small and it just differs from uh, a constant. Cool. Then let's take the wait, did you uh, say let's take the rest of the questions offline. Let's thanks Dorian again for the sweet nice time. And we do ten minute break, and we just eat into the lunch break a little bit. Thanks. So.